Hi, I'm Dr. Dan, and today's topic is assessing the blood-brain barrier. Now, our, our brain and spinal cord are, are bathed in something called cerebral spinal fluid, which is different than the blood. The rest of our tissues, of course, are, are um, fed by the blood system, but the blood carries certain nutrients to the brain and spinal cord, but then the, the, the components that the brain and, and spinal cord actually want have to be actively transported across this, this barrier. Now this barrier is a real barrier, and you can see it if you use a scanning electron microscope. Just normal uh, light, light microscope techniques won't show it. And most of this work was figured out over the last hundred years. Now, if uh, that blood-brain barrier is intact, you can maintain a healthy brain because only the stuff that your brain and um, spinal cord want will get through. But if that, if that barrier begins to break down, like your intestinal barrier can break down, and you've all heard of leaky gut syndrome by now. Now, leaky gut syndrome was, um, you know, was considered to be a true thing by alternative healthcare people 30, 40 years ago, but basically the medical establishment research community didn't buy it. But as time went on, they realized that those junctions between the, the cells of small intestine were not, were not fixed and were not what we call inert, but they were actually dynamic and could be influenced by several different factors. And the same is true of the barrier between the, uh, the blood system and the cerebral spinal fluid. So that's why we have that blood-brain barrier. Now, how can you assess this? Um, one good way is to use a, a very powerful uh, inhibitory neurotransmitter called GABA. Now, GABA is a very large molecule. So if you take um, ingest GABA by mouth, for example, or even have it injected, that should not get across your blood-brain barrier, and, and you should not feel any effects uh, from, this, uh, from this inhibition. So if, you, uh, if you've been taking GABA at night to help you sleep, then you've got problems. So here's how we do the assessment. Basically, if, if uh, you're relatively normal, you can try taking 500 to 1,000 milligrams. If you try 500, nothing happens, try 1,000. If nothing happens, then, then you're good. But if you're real sensitive, sometimes even a couple hundred milligrams of GABA can give you a very marked sedating effect. And if that happens, that means that that very large molecule is leaking right across your blood-brain barrier. And guess what? So is a lot of other stuff. So this effect can last all day long. And, you know, we've seen it last from a few minutes to, uh, to you know, feeling kind of hung over after that for, uh, for you know, maybe eight, nine, ten hours. So if that's happening for you, with you, you have a blood-brain barrier problem. Now, uh, this is all, always associated with inflammation because several different agents can affect this blood-brain barrier, either by, you know, either agents themselves or different processes. Now, if you have inflammation, we like to use a product called uh, Neuroflam by Apex Energetics. You know, if you take uh, four of those, you know, every hour when you're in a brain fog, and if that brings you out of the brain fog, then that's um, a positive test for, for brain inflammation. But these things go together, the inflammation and the brain fog and the uh, leaky blood-brain barrier. So anyway, um, this is a good thing to assess. And guess what? If you've got blood-brain blood -brain barrier problems, you've also got intestinal barrier problems, and you'll have to deal with that. Now, in another video, I'll, be, I'll do part one of, of uh, how you can actually treat this. So anyway, that's um, an overview of how you would assess for blood-brain barrier problems. And you can always check for more details on opiodinerpro.com. Thanks a lot for listening.